Well, more news from where you live now. Police in Colchester investigating the death of a man in his 20s whose body was found in the River Colne this morning. A passerby raised the alarm at 20 to 8. Police are investigating the death, but they don't believe it's suspicious. The body hasn't been formally identified, but police believe they know who he is and are speaking to his family. A fire at a large warehouse in Norfolk is not thought to have been started deliberately. 75 firefighters tackled the blaze on the Rackheath Industrial Estate last night. It took them three hours to bring the fire under control. The warehouse contained 20 tons of timber used for making window frames. The government has defended the region's fire service hub in Cambridge, which is costing taxpayers £166,000 every month, despite not being operational. The £23 million control centre at Waterbeach was completed last year, but delays over IT software mean it will not be open until 2011 at the earliest. The government said the centre is being used for meetings and by other groups. A man from Norfolk is preparing to cycle more than 100 miles in memory of his baby son. Toby Tremaine from Potterheim was less than four months old when he died from a rare genetic condition. Now Dad Robert hopes his sponsored ride will help the organisations that looked after Toby during his short life. Lauren Carter has this report. Hey. Ready? Daddy, push you higher. Playing in the garden, making the most of the sunshine. Hey. Robert and Helena Tremaine are certainly kept very busy by their two-year-old son, William. But there is someone missing, his baby brother, Toby. He died earlier this year, having suffered from a rare genetic condition. All right, ready? I should think so. Okay. As a tribute, his father is doing a sponsored bike ride with some friends to help other babies like Toby. This weekend, they'll be pedalling for 111 miles, one for every day of his son's life. At times, you could see he was in pain, so I figured 111 miles of pain in one day is, is nothing in comparison uh, in reality to his 111 days of struggling. We want to give something back to the hospital to thank them for everything they did for Toby because they were absolutely fantastic, and hopefully this will help another child. They'll cycle around Norfolk, setting off from Potter Hyam at 7.30 in the morning. They'll take ten short breaks along the way and should cross the finish line at ten and a half hours later at six o'clock. Of course, if you're going to be cycling for more than a hundred miles, then you are going to need a few supplies. The first aid box, the puncture repair kit, plenty of food, including those all-important chocolate bars, and an incredible 30 litres of water. But when it comes to pedal power, they may have some competition. Lauren Carter, Anglia News, Potter Hyam. Oh, good luck, Robert. You should have some lovely sunshine this weekend. Good. Now, it's been an extraordinary start to the new football league season with Brian Gunn sacking at Norwich and Paul Lambert leaving Colchester to replace him. And now, one of Ipswich Town's promising young players has decided to give up football at the age of just 22. And that's where Donovan Blake starts our Friday preview. He was a key member of Ipswich Town's first team squad and a Republic of Ireland under-21 international. But his status in professional football wasn't enough to persuade goalkeeper Shane Supple to stay in the game. And to think just a few weeks ago he was talking about his determination to become Town's number one choice. This is a massive year for me, the biggest in my career so far, so um, I'm going to be doing everything I can to, uh, to uh, get the number one spot. But it appears Supple's been trying to convince himself for too long. He was an FA Youth Cup winner four years ago, but at 22, he says his heart isn't in it anymore. It's not something that's happened overnight, you know. It's been uh, eating away at me for a long time now, you know, and it's come to a head. And uh, I'm doing this now for myself, you know, not for anyone else. So. A bolt from the blue for the Ipswich manager, although Roy Keane admires Supple for his honesty and bravery. He was brave enough to say the football wasn't for him, he didn't love the game and uh, and he didn't want to come in every week and pick up his wages. So that, believe it or not, I, I think that's something to be admired because I think a lot of people do that in life. And while Supple prepares to embark on a new career outside football, Keane is now looking for a new deputy for Richard Wright, hopefully in time for tomorrow's visit to West Brom. Darren Ferguson's Peterborough are also on the road to Preston, where goalkeeper Joe Lewis looks for his first championship clean sheet. Joe Dunn's task at Colchester is to keep them at the top of League One. He continues as caretaker boss against the MK Dons. 
Will a change of manager mean a change in fortunes for Norwich? Paul Lambert has started to work with the players he's inherited, so what will they produce against his old club, Wickham? It's new. It's new for everybody and the lads don't really know me as such at the minute. And, uh, and we will do our best to get a team on that pitch. I think we'll compete and they give their fans something that they deserve. Finally, South End will be hoping Lee Barnard's hot streak can continue tonight against Millwall. Donovan Blake, Anglia News. A 17-year-old who taught himself at home after being rejected by his local college because he suffers from Asperger's syndrome has won a place at Cambridge University. Alex Goodenough from Bishop Stortford learned from textbooks after his local sixth form college turned down his application to study A-levels. But Alex achieved six A-levels, including scoring 98% in physics. He'll now go on to study engineering at Trinity College.